in this video we will be adding and subtracting rational expressions with the same denominator. Once again, rational expressions is just a big fancy way of saying adding fractions. And as you recall from previous math classes, when you add or subtract fractions that have the same denominator, all you have to do is keep that same denominator and you're just going to collect like terms in the numerator. And then we would see if we could reduce that expression, of course, by factoring and then canceling or reducing common factors. So this should be a pretty easy, easy lesson because all we're doing is we're keeping that same denominator, collecting like terms, and then possibly doing some factoring and reducing. So let's look at these directions. It says once again, perform the indicated operations and reduce to lowest terms. Now that's what we saw from multiplication and division as well, but this time our indicated operations should be subtraction and addition. So you have to think, how do I have to add fractions? And of course they have to have the same denominator. So let's look at this first example. They have the same denominator, so I'm going to write one fraction with that denominator and then collect like terms across the top. So that's 25 minus 4, which is 21. Then I can reduce this because 3 and 21 are both divisible by 3. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 21 7 times, so I have 7 divided by x. And that's all there is to it. Don't make it any harder. All right, let's look at number two. Now we have some binomials, but they're the same denominator. So I'm going to keep that denominator, and I'm going to collect like terms across the top because this is addition. So 3x plus 4x is 7x, and a positive 1 and a negative 6 is a negative 5. Can I factor and reduce? That does not factor. There's no GCF. That does not factor. They're not opposites. I'm done. Now here we have subtraction. So anytime we have subtraction, I want you to just kind of put a big red star in your mind or on your paper and say, be careful. That minus has to go, be distributed to both of those. So it's good that we have the same denominator. So I'm going to write that down, but I'm going to take my time and be careful with that minus sign. So I have x squared minus x minus 6. Again, you're distributing to the numerator. Then I want to see, can I factor that? Well, that looks like a trinomial I might be able to factor. Let's see what happens. x times x is x squared. 3 times 2 is 6. And a negative and a positive would make that negative 1. But can I reduce anything? No, nothing is alike. So I could have stopped here and gotten full credit or just to be on the safe side, I factored it and said, hmm, nothing factors. And so that is also a correct answer. What happens when you have opposite denominators? Hmm. Well, you notice x minus 2 and 2 minus x are opposites. y minus 3 and 3 minus y are opposites. So I can't just keep the same denominator because I don't have the same denominator. But with a little math magic, you can make them the same. All right. Since I think x minus 2 looks more normal, I'm going to make this one look like that one. How can I do that? Well, if I turn it around to make it the opposite, remember I have a negative 1. Well, this negative 1 and that negative, what happens? Let me write this out step by step. So this is still 5 over x minus 2. But this is negative 1 times x minus 2 in the bottom and a 6 on top. That negative on the bottom can be written as a negative on top. Remember, a negative fraction has got a negative on the top or the bottom, either place. Then I know that a negative times a negative is a big fat positive. So I'm going to keep that same denominator of x minus 2 and now I have 5 plus 6 because I had a, a negative and a negative. So 5 plus 6 is 11. Nothing to factor, nothing to reduce. That's it. Let's do another one, a little bit. 
All right, so again, I'm going to keep the x over y minus 3 because I think that's the more normal looking denominator. And then since that's an opposite, I'm going to rewrite that as negative 1 times y minus 3. Put that 5x on the top. And again, since I need those to be the same, that negative needs to move up top. But this time, I have a positive and a negative. So I'm going to write out every step. So now I have a negative 5x on top of y minus 3. So now I have exactly the same denominator. So I'm going to keep that, and I'm going to collect like terms across the top, and now I have an x and a negative 5x, which is a negative 4x. Once again, that doesn't reduce, doesn't factor. That's the final answer. Let's do one more. x minus 4 and 4 minus x. Think, I'm going to take my time. I'm writing that as x minus 4, 3x squared minus 7. Again, I have a plus sign. I'm going to turn that around and make it negative times x minus 4. Okay. These don't match because I have that negative, so I need to get rid of it by bumping it up to the top. And now I have to be really careful because I don't I have a positive and a negative stays negative. So that negative has to be distributed. So again, I'm going to write out every step. So I have this plus, then a negative x squared, a positive 2x, and a negative 12 over just x minus 4. Now my denominators are exactly the same. I can collect like terms. 3x squared minus 1x squared is 2x squared. Then I have 2x, and I have a negative 7 and a negative 12, which is negative 19. And I could look at that trinomial and think about how to factor it, but it's prime. There, it just doesn't factor, so I am done. Pretty easy. You just have to be careful of all of those signs when you're doing the opposites. So let's go back up here. I moved this negative 1 up top, and I had a negative and a negative, which made a positive. But on the next example, since I had a plus, that negative stayed. Keep the denominators that have to be the same, then collect like terms across the top, making sure you distribute any negative signs.